Oh my gosh. Many of you are probably at the point where you're expanding your business. Some of you might be past the expansion and you're now pulling your hair out, wondering, oh my gosh, I need help. Most of you have no idea where to start when you need to outsource for help within your business or your growing company. Our guest today is the founder of The Professional VA and a virtual strategy expert. I can't wait for you to meet her. She's been supporting entrepreneurs virtually for more than a decade. That's a really long time and a lot of expertise behind her. She's passionate about growing your business. She's an author of Virtual Team Builder for Coaches and has a thriving online training program for aspiring virtual assistants. It will not take you long to figure out why she was chosen by me to be on the show and to teach you some ins and outs of figuring out the questions to ask, when you're ready to expand, how do you know how to bring the right business people on your team? So we're going to meet her in just a second. This is the Erin Strayer Show. If you are watching us from any other platform, because we're out there, there's a link right above you in the feed. Go ahead and click that. Come on over here and say hi to us. I already see Tiffany. Hey, it's been a long time, friend. Um, click that. Come over here and say hello to us. We'll make sure to say hello back. This is where we promote cultivate and expand amazing female entrepreneurs that are out there in the world doing things just a little bit differently. We talk about hot topics like expanding your business and hiring people and bringing them on. That's painful for so many of us to know how and where to look for resources. We're going to talk about that today and we're going to give you workarounds to that very challenge right there. Who am I? I'm Erin Strayer, and recovering corporates and entrepreneurs hire me to get them business beyond basics because most of them are indecisive, they're held hostage by their own fear, and honestly, they have become complacent and have settled for average. So I help them keep on task by setting obtainable goals, plugging gaping holes in their business and their personal lives, and I help them take their dreams to reality. Bottom line, I provide a executive level accountability sessions so that you and your business gets the attention to detail it deserves and you start excelling in your business and making money. Holly Kyle is all about making money. Hi, yes, friend. Yes, it is. Hi, friend. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so good. good. I'm so excited to have you here. Hi, oh, hi, hi. I've been so looking forward to being here today. <sighs> Cool. Hi, Brigetti. She's coming all the way across the pond to say hi to us this morning. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, Tiffany's here. We got some friends with us this morning. That's I this love afternoon. it. Kim Boltzma's here. She's SEO Oprah. You guys get to talk, the two of you. Just oh, saying. nice. Yeah. So VA strategy expert. Yes. Yes. Like forever. Um, well, you know, that wasn't my initial background. I kind of fell into it. Um, I uh, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the Reader's Digest version. My corporate background was in medical administration and consulting. And uh, I ran a big rheumatology practice. And then I went out on my own. Uh, I, you know, was able to get doctors money and they love that. Um, and then I got sick. Um, you know, life happens and I got, uh, a, you know, a, a disease that I have mitochondrial disease, which nobody's ever heard of. And, uh, turns out there's, there's really no treatment for it. Um, but I had to change my whole life and, and what I was doing. And so I took those same business principles I was using and um, I ended up applying them in a different way uh, to, you know, the more to the masses, I guess, as a virtual assistant and, uh, you know, fell into it. I needed something I could work from home, be flexible. And then I found out I loved supporting entrepreneurs in that way. It was just a, a really creative way to help build a business. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I got to be the confidant, the, the partner without signing a partnership agreement and, and, and every day is different, which I love. So, uh, and now here we are fast forward 12 years later, and I never thought I'd be doing what I'm doing, uh, you know, long-term, but I love it. I can't imagine doing anything else. And I'm teaching others to do the same, which is really, you know, something I'm very passionate about. 
It's so good. It's so good. And like one kudos to figuring out how to make a business basically when you've just been given a, Hey, we can't fix you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank scenario, you. Right? Um, yeah. I was, you know, I was, I, I wallowed in it for a couple of weeks. I'm human. Um, right? you know, I, we all got to well, have that little bit of time. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I was angry. I wallowed and, and I was like, okay, but you know, it's at, at that point, then, you know, you just say, God, okay, what, how am I going to fix this and do it on my terms? You know, I needed something flexible. And, and that was really what it came down to. And I think that's for all of us, you know, sit down and figure out what's not working. And then, you know, what are, what are some solutions to make it work? And so, you know, what wasn't working for me was I couldn't travel. What wasn't working for me was I actually couldn't drive for a while. And I was a single mom. And I still had to have an income, you know, and, right. and so, and I needed the flexibility because there were some days I just didn't feel like it. And so I needed to be able to work, you know, from two in the afternoon or at 10 in the morning. And, and it just, this was what fit in my particular box. And, and, you know, I think a lot of us are afraid to look outside of the traditional norms. And, and I think the same goes for outsourcing. We think, gosh, we have to hire somebody 40 hours a week. No, you don't. You'd be amazed at what somebody one hour a week helping you can do for your business. And that is what I teach people is, you know, let's, let's maximize your minutes because that's really what it comes to. You guys, I'm just going to interrupt her for just a second. If you haven't figured out already, you better get a wheelbarrow because Holly's going to be dropping some nuggets like crazy today. <laughs> Have a, Sharpen your pencil. I don't care. But we're going to like hit this run in really fast here because what Holly wants to do is help you be more informed on when you are ready to expand or if you're already coming out of your seams and you like you're past the point of needing somebody to help you, how you go about knowing who's right, finding the right, recognizing the time. So we're going to like really dive in that. If you guys have questions as we're rolling, drop them in the feed. We love to handle those. So like number one, how do you know if a virtual assistant's right for you, Holly? So first things first, you have to know, are you ready to let go? Right. And that's so hard for us. Um, it's, hard, it's hard for me and I teach it. Um, so if you're like, oh, God, nobody's going to do it better than me. You're right. Nobody will ever do it better than you because you created your system, your whatever. However, 80 percent is still better than what most people are getting. So you have to learn to say sometimes that good enough is good enough. OK, but I'll tell you this, when you free up space and energy that you're doing things that are not revenue producing and then you move yourself into revenue producing mode, your business is going to explode. So if you look at your time, here's a simple exercise. OK, look at your day and go, all right, I'm going to write down everything I'm doing and I'm going to put a mark next to everything that wasn't revenue producing. If you've got more than four things on that list, it's time for you to get some help. You know, it's just that simple because if you are spending more time doing non-revenue producing things, then you're wasting valuable, valuable time where you could be helping somebody with what your actual brilliance is. You know, I love that you feel like you need to do your newsletter. You don't. You really don't. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> let that go it's okay <laughs> tiffany is like Ugh! right like it's so hard because we as women especially i think are more control freaks we're the only ones that can do it right and we know it's done the right the right the first time and i don't have to go and correct somebody else's spelling or i don't have to correct punctuation or i don't like it sounds like me when I write it or whatever the task is. Like I know when I do it, it's done and done right. And, <laughs> well, and so you, you get into this control and trust factor and, and those are all really big things 
that are they're part of our core values as women i think i think it's genetically encoded right. um and and so you know if any of you are thinking gosh i just couldn't let go you're you're not abnormal you are perfectly like the rest of us um but so my advice is think of, don't think about letting go of everything think about one thing okay and and it could be something simple as i'm going to give somebody this blog post i wrote and i'm going to let them post it or i'm going to let them hunt down for the picture um i'm going to let them unsubscribe so here's a true story I had somebody one time that for the first month that we worked together, all they did for me was they would forward an email to me with the letter U and that was my cue to just unsubscribe. That was how we cleaned up her inbox. And so every time she was getting all these things, we spend on average, and I've tested this over and over again, on average two to eight hours a month just deleting email. Somebody write that in the comments. Two to eight hours? Okay. Can a you imagine month. what you could do with an extra eight hours a month coaching somebody, delivering your product or service, and not dealing with email? Uh, you could do a ton of stuff and pay for a lot of people to help you at that rate. So just deleting email, if that's all you got off your plate, that's a huge thing. And it's really hard to screw up unsubscribing, right? Right. <laughs> so that's an easy one to let go of. Super <laughs> simple. Um, you know, and, and, and some of it could be, I just need somebody to update the copyright date on my website, right? It might take you, because you're not a web person, might take you a half hour to figure out where that is. Me, it takes me two minutes. Two minutes to go in, because I know right where it is. And I'm only going to bill you two minutes. Yeah. And, and so, you know, your half hour you got back, and I only charged you two minutes, that's gold. That is money in the bank. And that's where it's at, ladies, is you have to look at those little bitty pieces of things you know don't think website overhaul think all right this little thing this this nugget i need to take care of who can i give that to okay and and that's really you know you're overwhelmed take a look at what's not revenue producing and think of what's the one thing if i got off my plate today i could move forward and do something else all right and then make a plan to make that happen so hopefully that helps. <laughs> <laughs> I love Tiffany. She said that her business is her fifth child. Oh, I love that. I and love that. Yeah. Um, she does still work full time and she has, you know, her, what she does uh, is really her passion and she's working towards leaving her J-O-B and running her program. And um, yes, yeah, you're talking right right to her. I'm, I'm speaking her language. Speaking yeah. To her, speaking to her. So at the point that you recognize, oh my gosh, I'd rather have somebody do that for me. Those easy tasks, that two minute task that might've took me a half an hour or an entire day, depending. I was right? trying to be nice. Trying to be nice. I'm not in the business of hurt and feelings today. <laughs> so, so when, when is it really like, is there a, an, a definitive time to hire? And yeah. Out and yeah. So there's some things that you need to look for, um, you know, not working a full-time job aside, you know, cause that's, that's a whole different thing. Um, but if you're working, you know, late nights, weekends, and um, if you're running late for appointments all the time or missing appointments, um, those kind of things are big red flags that you need help and it's time to hire somebody. Mm -hmm. So, and those are really the most common I see, you know, women, women, women take on so much. It's so hard for us to say no. Mm -hmm. And, and so because it's hard for us to say no, I want to teach you some new things to say yes to oh. say yes to help say yes to 
outsourcing. Say yes to growing your business and yes to yourself, really, and the passion that you have by doing things a little more creatively. And, and a lot of times that can happen through a virtual assistant. So, you know, it's that's that simple. If no is so hard to say, then you got to figure out a way to say yes. Oh, I like that. I like that. And, and I am a yes and person. Mm hmm instead of an either or person. And um, so you're talking right to me. So so now we're in this place where we've said yes. We're in this place where we have identified that somebody else clearly can do it as well as I can, or 80% as, you know, uh, whatever that 80, 20 thing was that you threw out. Yep. Um, Clearly they can't do it as well as me, but. (laughs) Obviously, <laughs> clearly they can probably do it faster, quicker, and as efficiently as me. Um, so, how do I find these people? Because for me, that's a really hard thing to to trust my business with somebody else to put yeah. that um, to put it out there and go. Okay, let's start with this. Let's see how you do. Okay, and then let's up the ante. But yeah. where do we find those people? So, other than if we know you, well. Hiring is brutal, okay, oh, and right? and and so yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, you know, I'll tell you, it's one of my least favorite things to do. I get a little anxious, um, even doing it for myself. But I'll tell you this: so go to credible sources. Mm. Um, that's that's the number one thing you can do. The, and where do the, you find them? Ask your friends that you trust. Okay, who are they using? Mm-hmm. All right. You you guys all know somebody who has hired a VA and and ask them, is your VA hiring, you know, taking on new clients? Um, do you know somebody? So go to your your trusted circle of, of, of friends, your tribe. If you're in a Facebook group, Aaron, you've got a group. Yep. Um, you know, go in there and ask, because that's really one of the places I think people forget to go. Um, the other thing is there are some reputable virtual assistant organizations that have boards that you can post jobs to RFPs, um, the IVAA international virtual assistance association has, uh, an RFP process. Those are people who have been in it. They're doing it. They're doing the work and they're reputable. Um, and you know, they've got the organization behind them. Um, you know, if you know somebody like me and say, Holly, do you know somebody who specializes in Infusionsoft, in ClickFunnels, in Active Campaign? That's another thing. Be very, very specific about what you're looking for. Don't right. just say, I need help because, right. you know, you throw out a wide net, you're going to get a generalist. And I think that's one of the mistakes that a lot of entrepreneurs make mm-hmm. is they hire a generalist when they really need specific help. So don't be afraid to say, I specifically need help with my WordPress website using those kind of words. Um, because if you get an expert in, in uh, Infusionsoft, I guarantee you they're going to know a lot of other stuff. OK, mm-hmm. um, they didn't get there overnight. They they learned a lot of things on the way. So, you know, be be prepared with what programs you use. And, and and if you don't have those programs in place, if you need systems, say, you know, here's what I have going on in my business now and here's where I want to go, you know, and be be very clear about that and, and specific. But going to those things, don't go to Craigslist to hire don't you know please don't. Uh, oh please don't please don't please. um you know look for look for people that you know i think is really the the biggest place um if you if you've got a trusted community then then you're going to be more likely to trust where you get the results i don't refer anybody to my friends or my tribe that i can't stake my reputation on it's huge right and and so go into your girlfriend's network is is something you don't be afraid to do it is not an admission of of being weak or you know anything it is a celebration that you are growing that you need help Mm -hmm. and they're going to want to support you in that so that's really you know the two places i would say a va organization like uh you know ivaa or uh the global association of virtual assistants uh, those are the two that i'd recommend 
That's awesome. Clara. Hi, Clara. Thanks for joining. Um, she said she was just Googling for information on VAs this weekend and would like to delegate some of her workload. Uh, she works full time trying to put together her business. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you know, uh, congratulations for being ready to dip in that pool. Um, it can be a little overwhelming, um, the process, but it's so exciting. And, you know, one of the things I'll tell you guys, if you've never done it before, prepare to be a little patient because it's going to take some time for you guys to get to know each other. So, you know, give it 90 days. Don't give up in the first two weeks because it's frustrating because it will be. They're trying to learn you. You're trying to learn them. You're learning a way to communicate. And, you know, they, they're they trying to come up to speed on your business overnight. Um, and so just be patient because they ultimately – the uh, quality VA really wants you to succeed because when you succeed, they succeed. And, and so if everybody just goes into it with the right expectations, then everybody feels good about it. Yeah. And that's huge to point out too, Clara. I love what she said about putting a, a 90 day, three month um, trial out there. It's kind of like your 90 day sign on, on your new job. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And, each each party is going hey is this going to be a work, great working relationship am i going to be the right fit for them are they the right fit for me are we going to have great communication what's that look like and figuring it out um yeah and that and that's really how you should be doing business like exactly yeah with with any vendor that you're working with really you know whether it's a va or a coach you know don't expect things to happen overnight you know the reality is is there's no magic pill right. that it, it does it takes relationships or work mm -hmm. and that's all this is it's a it's a different relationship that you're bringing bringing in to your your business it's you know it's like hiring a babysitter for your for your for your other baby right you know and and so you've got to do your due diligence and that's one of the things that um i wanted to talk about is yeah. you know when you do find somebody how do you know uh, you know that who you're hiring is the right person yeah. um and so uh there are definitely some questions yeah that let's you talk about should that. be asking um it's not the same as hiring somebody to flip hamburgers okay and it's not the same as hiring um a local personal assistant there are some very specific things when you're hiring virtually and um, and so one of the things I've got a, a list of 20 questions that I've put together um, that are super helpful. And I think Aaron's got it on the screen for you um, at yeah, hiringvirtual.com. Um, and just real quick, I want to tell you about this download you're going to get. It's got 20 questions. You don't have to ask them all. But it also tells you why you would ask that question. That's beautiful. And and that's really what's important. You're looking for, um, and it's not just, um, it, it's not just, you know, what do you do, right? Yeah. It really is about finding the right fit. Um, I, when I'm looking for somebody, I like to work with people that have kids because my number, my why for doing my business is my son. Sure. Right. And I need somebody who's going to get that, you know, because if something happens, there's an emergency. I need them to understand that sometimes things happen with kids. Sure. And and somebody who doesn't know that is not going to necessarily get that. And and I think if we really look in some of these value pieces and you, so you'll find these questions are a little different, um, but uh, it'll help you really feel comfortable about who you're talking to. And don't be afraid to walk away if you get that little in the back of your head that says this isn't quite right. Yeah. You're anxious and I know you want to hire, but you want this to be right. And so keep looking until your heart sings and, and you go, okay, this is somebody that I feel gets me and I get them and I think we're a good match. I love that. I love that. And, um, that's so important also like your business is your baby just like mm -hmm. you said you're hiring another babysitter who's going to be that person that you trust your baby with yeah and if you get those little yep 
something's just not, this is a little, a little creepy, you know, you get the little creepy crawly hair standing up, the little red flag flying, whatever you want to call it, then that's a no. That's not the right person for you. So when you bring these people, how do you, like, I, I want to ask this too, because this is always a big question for me. How do I know how to start that relationship with that person? Oh, that's such so a good one. That it, oh. it ends up being, you know, it starts on the right foot, that it's um, going in the way that I want it to go. And that that's all reciprocated because oh. that's a huge thing for me. You know, these people aren't in my office. They don't come to, they don't come and clock in right? Yeah. So, so good. I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, it really starts off. I do a kickoff call with all of my clients and that's what I teach um, all of our VA students to do it, to start that relationship on the right foot, do a kickoff call. And in that kickoff call, set expectations. So for example, um, when I give, you know, if I'm the, the business owner, when I give you a task, my expectation is that you're going to be able to turn that around in 48 hours and then say, is that realistic? Because mm. if they say to you, no, I don't work that fast or no, that's good. Then if it doesn't work that way, then you've said, okay, my expectation was this, that didn't happen. It's measurable, right? Sure. Okay. And you want things to be measurable. Um, you've got to set some boundaries and, and those things. And then, you know, set expectations about how, how are you going to communicate with each other? Is it through email? Is it, you know, hopping on a Zoom call? Is it through text? Right. Um, you know, if you're hiring a millennial, they, they communicate a whole different way than I do. Right. right? And, and that could be a huge mismatch, right? And it has nothing to do with the qualifications. It has everything to do with how you feel like things are going and, and, and they feel like things are fine because, you know, they're texting. And then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, this just isn't working out. And so, you know, having that conversation up front, and sometimes you're going to have some of these discussions in that discovery call process, but, you know, setting it down. The other thing that you should do in that very first call is I tell, I tell an entrepreneur, give me your top three things. I don't want to know any more than that. I just want to know your top three things that you want to focus on getting off your plate. Mm. Chances are really good that I'm going to be able to get those off of your plate in the first two weeks of working together. Okay. And here's what that does. That's a quick win. Yeah. And that's a success thing. You feel good about us working together. I feel good about us working together. And the trust starts to build. If you just give me entrepreneurial vomit, about all the things that are overwhelming you, there's no way I can get that done. And I'm, I'm going to scramble trying to prioritize and figure out what's most important for you. And I barely know you at that point. And so if we focus in on those three things, then you and I know exactly what we're working on. And if I'm done in 24 hours, great. Give me three more. OK, but, you know, don't don't unload everything because you're setting yourself both up for frustration. I love that. You guys. Oh, my gosh. Cram packed full 28 solid minutes of Holly Kyle giving it to you one thing after another on how you can expand your business with ease with knowledge, with the right tools, the right people. She's given us an amazing resource. We'll stick it back on the screen. It's also in the feed for you. This is her gift to you. It's 20 questions to ask when you're looking to expand your business or you're already past the point of expansion and you're pulling your hair out and you need to know how and who and where to reach for help. So Holly is like, an amazing, amazing resource. How do they find you, Holly? So you can always find me at the website, hjkglobal.biz. Um, I'm on Facebook uh, and, and very open to uh, connecting and you can ask me questions. That's what I want to be a resource. Um, so I look forward to uh, hearing from all of you. And Erin, I do have actually a surprise um, for five of the people that opt in for the uh, checklist. Uh -huh. I'm actually going to gift, I'm giving away um, copies oh. of the book. So 
um, go there. Five people. I'm going to draw them at the end of next week and uh, ship out a copy of my book, Virtual Team Builder for Coaches. You guys, so. what an unbelievable gift. That's amazing, Holly. That's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. We got one last question. If you feel like addressing it before. Sure. We, I know I want to be um, honorable of your time. Tiffany's asking, she said, so do you recommend allowing admin access to social media platforms? Is that specific to a social media VA? Oh, such a good question, Tiffany. So um, I'm going to hit the first question about access um, because that, that falls into that trust factor. If you guys are not using uh, something like LastPass mm -hmm. or KeepPass or, you know, something like that, a password vault, then you need to sign up, do the free service. You don't have to pay for it. Um, but that is a way that you could share your password. They don't see it. And you can turn that off at any time. Okay. So that's how you can give them access to your different platforms um, and, and share that rather than them logging in. Now, if it's a business page, you can make them an editor on there. Um, but if it's posting as you, Twitter, Instagram, things like that, then you're going to want to share access. A social media VA is the probably the best way to go, but they're going to focus just on social media and make sure if you're hiring a social media VA that they're not just going to be posting. Make sure they understand strategy behind why you need social media support, that it's not just putting stuff online, that it is the process of, you know, driving traffic and, and gathering leads and building relationships. Because a lot of people say, oh, I know Facebook. I'm on Facebook all the time. Or, I, you know, I use Pinterest and, and I get all kinds of recipes. And that's great. But from a business perspective, it doesn't necessarily cover what you need. So, you know, dig in a little bit deeper and make sure just because they say they're a social media VA that you dig in and say, okay, what kind of results are you seeing for your clients as far as traffic leads? You know, likes don't equal dollars, ladies. Amen. Right? Amen. Likes don't equal dollars. So, you know, you, you're looking at opt-ins and people spending money. So let's, you know, find out about that. And if they can't quantify that in some way, next move on to somebody else. So this leads me into my question to you, since you have a VA Academy and yes. you train people, do you have people like that that have come up through your training that you recommend? Is that something that you do? Do you not necessarily farm people out, but recommend, okay, this person excelled. This is what they went into. I've watched them. They're vetted. Referral. Absolutely. So I do vet people. Um, a lot of times what an entrepreneur will do is they'll come to me and they are, um, they'll say, Hey, Holly, I'm looking for somebody specific. I'll put a call out in my group. I will schedule a 15 minute screening call just to kind of go through some things. And then I will present that business owner with some options and say, all right, this person's been through the school. I know they've been trained. I've had a recent conversation. I know that this is somebody that I, you know, feel like is a good fit for you and you should schedule a call with them. Um, so I, I extend that to you. Anybody feel free to hit me up if you're looking for something specific that I've got, uh, I've got, more than 500 people that um, are currently active in the school. So I've got access plus I've been in the industry a long time. So for those of you who need some uh, higher level things, not necessarily somebody who's new um, or newish, then, um, you know, let me know and I can probably find you somebody. That's awesome. That's awesome. Again, you guys, uh, Holly, drop this amazing link in uh, just for you. It is free. It's the virtual, the hiring virtual.com. Uh, it's 20 questions to ask when you're looking to bring somebody on board for you. Holly is a uh, amazing resource for you. She has, just like she said, she has over 500 people that are currently, that's not who have already gone through. That's who's currently in her uh, VA Academy and, are vetted and working with her and she is happy to refer those people on to you. Um, reach out to her. You guys, it's all about, that's what we do here on the Aaron Strayer show is bring you resources so that you 
can work better, more efficient, more proficient inside of your business and the things that help you do that. So Holly Kyle, dun, this dun, was dun, so dun. much fun. It's beautiful. I had, a, I had a blast. It's brilliant. You guys, we really appreciate you being here. We're going to um, honor Holly's time. We're going to let her fly. You have been watching us on the Aaron Strayer Show. Please, if you have comments, drop them in the feed. If you're watching the replay, we so appreciate that. We will loop back around and answer your questions if you have them. Uh, and uh, we're here live every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. And we'll see you right back here soon. Thanks for having me. Oh, All right. So good. We'll see you right back here soon, friends. Take care. Thanks.